I'd like to talk to you today about Gnostic will worshippers. Hmm, very interesting study here, and a very important study, one that I have um, been struggling with for a very long time, not really understanding exactly how to define these heretics out there um, that talk about it, that salvation is all just up here, it's all just belief, it's all what you think in your mind. There's no outward changes or whatever else. And I never made the connections before till um, just studying this issue. And uh, page 20 here, I'm going to read from a book that my wife is currently reading. It's called uh, The Papal Princes, A History of the Sacred College of Cardinals. Right there it is. You can see it. Okay. Very telling thing it says in here. Gnosticism held appeal for the intellectuals who couldn't bring themselves to accept the new religion of slaves and fishermen. It held that God indeed was the father of all things, but he had isolated himself from the world. Between him and humanity were beings called eons. Jesus, the Gnostics believed, was an eon, an instrument of God that had existed for all eternity, and his re redemptive influence evolved not from his crucifixion, but his knowledge, gnosis, of the mind of God. Personal redemption, then, depended not on how you behaved, but on how much you knew. Knowledge became more important than morality. Gnosticism continued to be an important heresy for almost 200 years. It was especially strong in Syria and Egypt, where it developed its own highly ceremonious ritual. The church fought it by showing historically that she, upholding the teachings of the apostles, had the sole right to define doctrine and morals. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> but the whole point is, uh, and you can, this is just one place to define it. You can define it from multiple sources. Gnosticism, it's all up here. It's all, you know, another, it's kind of funny because, you know, the Catholic Church condemns Gnosticism and yet practices not Gnosticism. You say, how so? What is transubstantiation, the Eucharist? What is it? Well, you see the inner reality um, is that it's Christ's body and blood in the host and the wine. Um, but the outward appearance is something different. So the inner reality is different than the outward appearance. Well, that's Gnosticism, right? It's, uh, you have to understand these things. You have to know these things. Um, that's a Gnostic system. But for many years, I've dealt with these people that say that there's no repentance, there's no changed life, there's no anything, and they're Gnostics. Never really thought of it before, but they are, by dictionary definition, Gnostics. When they say, just believe, just believe, and where it says, you know, in Romans chapter 10, they have to get rid of that, and they say, well, just believe, it's confessing with your mouth. No, you know, you don't have to pray to ask God to save you. You know, no, just never mind that stuff, because, see, it's getting away from just up here. And you have uh, Robert Faker Breaker coming out, and, you know, his salvation testimony, he just, okay, I'm saved. You know, why? Well, I just believe it. I understand the gospel now, and I believe it, and boom, there, done. There's no connection to God there. Oh, it's just all up here. And it's so strange to me because, again, I've run into people over the years. They're very interested in my ministry. And why? Because they're trying to gain that gnosis, that knowledge. They're just, they watch everything and they're, they're learning. Oh, that's an interesting way to look at that. Oh, oh, oh. you know, uh, there was some woman years ago on Patreon and, and she was literally a, um, a secular philosopher, you know, into psychology and a bunch of other stuff. And she loved my videos because she was learning so much. And then when I came out and said, you can't possibly know everything, there are some things that have to be revealed to you and, and whatever by the Lord, and, uh, you know, about the book Revelation in particular, oh, then she, you know, oh, you're a heretic, I'm done supporting you and everything else. Yeah, so we're going to get into this thing of the Gnostic will worshipers. Turn, turn first to the book of Colossians in your King James Bible. Colossians chapter 2. We're going to read down through the chapter because there's a lot in there that talks about these people that get into the thing of worshiping their mind, their own will. See, again, that's another part of it. My own will, my own desire, you know, is whatever on some issue. And I'm just going to keep on, you know, studying things to support what my desires are. You worship your own will, in other words. And you get to a point where you are so convinced that your will is what is the right thing, even though there's many places that contradict Scripture, you start to actually worship your will. Oh, God showed me this. Oh, God told me that. And yeah, it's not what the Bible says, you know. So let's get into this here. Colossians chapter 2, verse 1. 
For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea, and it for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgment of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, <clears throat> in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, they're not up here, they're up there, okay, up north, that way, uh, sides of the north there, city of the great king, they're with God. So how do you get true knowledge? How do you get true wisdom and truth, ultimate, absolute truth? You have to be connected to God. And how do you do that? Well, just up here, it's all up here. No, it's here. It's up here, you believe what you're reading here in the Bible, but you also ask God to save you. You see, oh, you're trusting in your, in, in asking and whatever, you're trusting in your prayer. No, I'm trusting in God, that's why I pray. See? As I've said before in other studies, uh, I call 911, why? Because I trust that the fire department can come put out my fire. I'm not just saying, oh, I'll call 911 and see what happens. You know, just the calling on the phone is what does it. No, I'm calling somebody that can come and help me with my problem. You call and you ask the Lord to save you. It's because you believe what the Bible says that he can save you and you're trying to contact him to save you. That's how that works. <clears throat> Verse 4, And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. Hmm. The philosophers. And you will see, by the way, as we go through this study, the reason that the will worship, the Gnosticism is so popular, the reason it's it's a big thing among people today is because you can have all the knowledge up here, here, and you can read all these books and all these commentaries and, you know, and, and all this stuff, and you can continue in your sin. And you just tell yourself, I'm saved. I don't need to do anything outwardly. You see, there doesn't have to be any kind of changes in my life and repentance of sin and turning from things and whatever else and getting victory over certain sins and the process of sanctification. You know, oh, all that, all that dirty nonsense. Uh, no, I'll just live the way I want to. That's why it's so popular. Verse 5, For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. Your order? You mean changed life? Hmm. Joying and beholding your order. Hmm. Verse 6, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so believe ye in him. Increase that knowledge, that gnosis. Get that up there because Jesus was an eon and therefore you can become sort of an eonic yourself. You know? uh, no, so walk ye in him. Take up your cross and follow the Lord. Daily too, by the way. Present your bodies as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. There's to be works meet for repentance. There has to be a changed life with true conversion. It's not all just up here. Verse 7, Rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Um, rudiments of the world, what are they? I'll give you a couple here. Um, number one, everybody else does it. You hear that one? Uh, we always have done it. A little bit doesn't hurt. My conscience doesn't convict me. We know when to quit. You got to make a living and get married. It all depends on how you look at it. Okay? Those are the kinds of th things that people, those are the philosophies of the world, the rudiments of the world that they will say to you to get you away from the Word of God. That's what they'll do. Hmm. Rather interesting. Verse 9, For in him... Christ, in other words, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. If you don't understand the Godhead doctrine, I pray that you study that. I've done a lot of videos on that over the years. The Godhead is one being named God, composed of three parts, body, soul, spirit. Man is made after the similitude of God. Man has a body, a soul, a spirit. We're tripartite beings, just like God is a tripartite being. God is not three separate persons. There are not multiple spirits. God the Father is a spirit, the Holy Spirit is a spirit, and Jesus has his own spirit. Then there's three spirits. I contradict scripture that says that there's only one spirit. All right? Understand the Godhead. 
Jesus Christ. In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are in one being. When Jesus was walking around on the earth, he wasn't departed from God, his Father that's up in heaven, that he's a separate person. And no, no, the Father's up there as the soul. That's true, but he's also connected to the Son in the body. Jesus is walking around on the earth, and he is completely holy God. It's very important to understand that. But Trinitarian philosophers will try to get you away from that. And modalists will as well. Will as well. There we go. Verse 10. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Now that's talking about imputation. God's righteousness is imputed to you. That doesn't mean that you don't get in trouble if you sin. All right. What it's saying is when you get saved, the body of flesh, the sinful flesh that you're looking at right here, my sinful flesh, I can still do all the sins of the lost world out there. But because I'm born again, my soul is no longer connected to my flesh. My soul is eternal. My flesh is corruptible. If ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. The Bible talks about. I'm supposed to put down my flesh, the process of sanctification. And if I don't, then I will die an earlier death, but I will not lose my salvation. That's what the scripture is saying there. Right? But notice that there's supposed to be a change there. I mean, if, oh, well, no, there's no change. You just, you're cut free. You don't have to worry about what your flesh does. Then why even write about it? You see, it doesn't make any sense. Of course, there's supposed to be a change in your body. I mean, why wouldn't you want a change? That's one of the things that always has boggled my mind about these Gnostic will worshipers. Uh, you don't have to change your life. You don't have to be a new creature in Christ. Why wouldn't you want to be? If you're a drug addict or something, don't you want some help getting away from those drugs? You're an alcoholic, don't you want some help getting away from the, the booze? It's a negative, you know. If you're a porn addict, don't you want to get away from that vile, wicked, wicked sin? Messing your head up? Don't you want help with your sin? Well, not if you're a Gnostic. Verse 14, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which, was, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. It's one of the things you have to remember. Jesus didn't die on the cross in some kind of a weak thing of some little sissy, you know, oh, they, they, you know, I couldn't fight back or whatever. No, no, that was a military victory, the greatest military victory that's ever happened. Uh, he died on the cross, and in doing so, made a way for you to be saved, for me to be saved. Pretty neat. Verse 16. Okay, here it gets interesting, because there's a different side to this Gnostic thing. It isn't all just, I, hey, I believe, so I can go out and do whatever I feel like doing. There's another thing with Gnostic will worshippers. Gnostic will worshippers, what they will do is, they will pick and choose certain sins to go after. You'll hear a lot of these Baptists, you go to Baptist churches, I've been in so many of them over the years, <laughs> don't even talk to me about it. Uh, my Baptist church doesn't, yeah. Um, <laughs> you go to these Baptist churches and they will rail on the sodomites, all oh, these wicked, filthy perverts and everything, you know, and they'll go off about them, call them all kinds of names. And a lot of times you, you find out that a lot of the guys that are in that congregation there are, are porn addicts and womanizers and whatever else. And all of a sudden, oh, brother so-and-so, where do you go? Oh, he ran off, you know, with another woman. But uh, <laughs> what are they doing? Will worshippers, Gnostics, it, it's all up here. It's all in their mind. They learn the right things to say, the right uh, speeches and whatever else to really convince you that they're righteous. And uh, they're like the whited sepulchers that Jesus warned about with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Outwardly, they appear beautiful to men. They have their nice suit and tie on, but inwardly, they're full of dead men's bones. That's what a lot of these guys are. That's Gnosticism, okay? That's a will worshiper, somebody that worships the God up that they've created up here in their mind. They're disgusting, they're vile, but oh boy, they have some really high standards though. I mean, I've seen Baptists 
that were porn addicts that they would not wear a collared suit, any collar but black. It had to be a black suit with a white shirt and a black tie, period. Blue ties are of the, of the world, they're of the devil. Green suit jackets, no. Red, oh, that's really bad. You know, a blue shirt or something instead of a white shirt. Oh, you know. I've known Baptists that said that wire rim glasses are sin. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. Blue jeans are worldly. You're dressing like the heathen if you wear blue jeans. <laughs> I'm not joking. And yet these guys, you get around them, they'll cuss. They'll tell dirty jokes. A couple of them I've known, uh, they've been married multiple times. One guy I knew the one time he's yelling, screaming Baptist, Amen, praise the Lord. You know, in Sunday service, Harley Davidson, buying a Harley Davidson out there, riding around like some kind of a, talk about a lost heathen, you know, going to Harley rallies. You know, have you been to a Harley rally? I've been to them in my lost life. Uh, I wouldn't go near them now. Filthy, disgusting places. Oh, he's a, he's a, Strong Baptist. No, he's a will worshiper. He's a Gnostic. Head knowledge. That's all that he has. But let's go back to it here. Verse 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day. <laughs> Hello. Um, or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. All right. When you are truly born again, you're not to have anybody judging you in respect to meet or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or the Sabbath days. Why? Because we're all different. My culture is not your culture, unless you're sort of a Northern European Germanic type of a person. You know, you might be from the UK. You might be, you know, ultimately going back to the UK, I'm saying. Uh, your culture might be French. Your culture might be Italian. Your culture might be Spanish or, or African or, you know, Shemitic of some kind, uh, be it Korean, Chinese, Japanese, whatever. I'm not going to judge you based on your culture. We're supposed to preserve those cultural identities. You don't just give them all up. That's nonsense. You know, the disciples, the Jewish disciples, they didn't give up their culture. And again, you know, where's it at in Acts chapter 15? You know, the, the whole study, study I did on the thing of uh, Christmas there, you know, not long ago, and this, you know, these will worshipers, I knew that they would not answer me. Not one of them went after what I said. Acts 15, Romans 14. Acts 15, the, the council there of the disciples, the apostles. Um, where was any condemnation of, of holidays? While the Romans were practicing Saturnalia at that time, where's it at? Where did they name it? They didn't. There's no, uh, you know, you have to get rid of your holidays or whatever else. And holiday and holy day are the same thing, by the way. These, these liars will lie to your face. and Oh, they're different things. No, they're not. Okay. Getting to my point here in a minute. But... Romans 14, one man esteemeth one day above another, and another man esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> you know, some black guy shows up here, and he's got his traditional black outfit on, and his wife and children get out, and she's got a traditional black African dress. I'm not going to say, why aren't you dressed like a Northern European? Huh? <laughs> Where's your Bavarian shirt at? You know, <laughs> I don't care. Hey, praise Lord, brother. It's nice to see you. I'm not going to judge the guy. You know, I mean, if his culture includes, you know, cannibalism and, you know, shrinking heads down or something after you killed your victim, well, yeah, you, you know, kind of want to quit that one. Uh, but whatever, doesn't matter. But when you're a will worshiper, you'll look for little things that you can put out there. Oh, I have changed that and whatever else because you see it's a front that you put out. I don't stand for Christmas. I refuse to celebrate Christmas these holidays, holy days, you know, and all, whatever you want to say. Uh, I refuse to do these things. Um, then what are you doing playing video games when you condemn that, you know, and other stuff? And What are you doing uh, watching Hollywood movies? What are you doing using profanity? What are you doing with those cigarettes? What are you doing with that vaping, with the drugs that you're on and whatever else? And the porn that you look at. What about that? Gnostic will worshippers. And again, I don't even care. Somebody says, I, brother, I don't have anything to do with Christmas. Good for you. Fine. I don't care. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. You get it? Verse 18. Here it gets interesting. 
Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels. Hmm. That's rather interesting too. Worshiping of angels. Oh, I saw this and I, and I, I, I was shown this and whatever else. Um, it wasn't the Lord that showed you. Uh, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. So interesting. Um, I did a video years ago on this Gene Kim little goofball. And uh, he comes out and and um, he's doing all these videos and everything else. And, and he did a video answering, you know, me. And and, uh, and he, I think if I had that correct, he, I think it was the one he did answering one of my videos. And he said about, you know, Oh, the, the Trinity, uh, you know, you go back to, I think it was a verse in Numbers or something. It should still be on over on YouTube. But, oh, this, this verse there, and, and, he, and he goes back to this verse where it's talking about pagan, heathen, gods, plural. And he applied it to the Godhead, to the Trinity. And he's, oh, what are you going to do about that, huh? Let me, oh, isn't that something? Oh, oh you know, like, oh, this, look what God showed me. Uh, God didn't show you that. And what that guy is, he's just repeating what uh, he learned at PBI from Peter Ruckman. I can do the same thing. I have all the commentaries. I never went to PBI, but I might as well have. I mean, I I watched a lot of Ruckman's things, listened to a lot of his, his recordings and whatever, read a whole bunch of his books. I have a lot of his books in my collection. I could just spout that stuff off, but I, I compare Ruckman's stuff to the scriptures, and there's many times where Peter Ruckman is wrong, and I say, oh, okay, yeah, I don't agree with him there and whatever else. But uh, there have been times when I've literally been looking at the scriptures and I think, I get this idea that pops into my head and I think, hey, that, I wonder if the Bible teaches that. And I, I go here and I go there and I go, oh, wait, that verse kind of contradicts that thought I had. And ah, Lord, is this from you or not? And I, I try the spirits, whether they are of God, like we're supposed to do. And there have been many times I, I really had a good thought. You know, I really had a good sermon illustration or something and, and and then I actually study the scriptures and I realize uh, <laughs> no not from God um, but I've seen a lot of these guys and oh boy the Lord showed them some special thing and uh, it doesn't line up with scripture and you try to correct them on it and they will not be corrected why well, because they're puffed up by their fleshly mind. And I find that interesting too, by the way, uh, Gene Kim out there. Um, if you actually followed Peter Ruckman's ministry, you would realize that uh, the prophecy is given for the three sons of Japheth, or three sons of Noah, excuse me, Japheth is the one that's supposed to be enlarged, not Shem. Um, so how's your channel growing so well? Might want to think about that one. You're puffed up by your fleshly mind. And that, that kid has got so much pride in him. I mean, just... Stuff people have sent me about that guy. It's incredible. Some of the things he said and people continue to watch. Well, he's got 300,000 subscribers. Well, he must be good. <laughs> yeah. It's called You Can Purchase That. You can purchase the little artificial intelligence bots to go in there and inflate your numbers and things to make you look good. But continuing, verse 19. And not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together increaseth with the increase of God. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, which we talked about earlier, why as though living in the world are ye subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not, which all are to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men. These guys come up with all kinds of new standards and new rules and whatever else. Oh, well, what about you, Brian? You say that people that aren't in, in the natural health are going to hell. I've never made that statement. I've had that put on me. If you're not in the natural health, you're going to hell. No, I'm saying if a man is a preacher and he makes fun of natural health and actually promotes toxic food and toxic pharmaceuticals and everything else, I question that man's salvation. That was my statement. But if somebody, some brother or sister shows up and they're drinking a poison pop or something, I don't care. <laughs> I really don't care. If we get into the conversation, sure, I'll warn you about it and say, you might want to, you know, the stuff that's in that you know, high fructose corn syrup and all the other, you know, it's pretty bad for you. But I don't care. I'm not going to break fellowship with somebody like that. <sighs> but these people, I've seen these people, touch not, taste not, handle not. You can't look at Christmas lights. You can't do this. You, you know, you, 
you're not allowed to do this. You can't call this a Bible anymore. It's, it's now called Scripture. All these weird commandments. And oh, God showed them all. Yeah, I don't think so. And, you know, to my enemies out there, by the way, all the people that can, you know, obsessively watch my videos, you know, a lot of you really judge me harshly. But if you actually realized, you know, if you actually talk to me in person, you would realize I'm a lot more, um, a lot nicer of a guy than you think. But that's another issue. Verse 23, which things have indeed a show of wisdom and will worship. Hmm, will worship. They're worshiping their own mind. They're Gnostics. And there's a show of wisdom there. They can really put on a good show. You know, when I got saved, I said, I'm selling all out to God. And God showed me that the holidays are wrong. And God showed me that, go down through the list of these things that these people come up with, and, and therefore... I decided to go against those things and, and I gave up on all that and I don't do that anymore. And people go, wow, you know. Um, and then you look in the scriptures, you say, wait a second, where does God say to give up Christmas? Where does God say to give up eating pork or something like that? Um, where does God say to give up, you know, whatever? You can't dress a certain way. You can't touch this. You can't taste that. Uh, where does the Bible say that again? doesn't they're worshiping their own will they're gnostics which things have indeed a show of wisdom and will worship and humility and neglecting of the body not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh they look like they're doing really good it looks like a really pious holy thing and whatever else to to take these strong stands and you know i stand for the biblical flat earth well, I stand for the biblical sphere earth. Well, I stand for the biblical uh, Pringles chip shaped earth or something. Where's that? Where does it clearly say in there? Take stands for the flat earth. Take stands for this. Take stands. It doesn't. You know, and I've been really, you know, fervent about the thing of off grid and you should try to get off grid. and whatever. I don't care if you're on grid. Okay, there's some benefits to being on grid. I'm on grid right now in the office here. Electric lights lighting things up right now. Um, whatever, not a big deal. I'm not going to part company with you or whatever else. But, you know, I could really, you know, do the Amish, you know, non-electric, you know, oh, we're suffering and I could, I should be wearing black polyester and whatever and we're driving in my horse and buggy down the road and, oh, daddy, we're cold. Oh, it's, I know, I know, but we're, earning our way to heaven right now, you know, and see, you see, but then that's, that's work salvation, not just intellectual belief. Uh, well, that goes along with it though. See, that's what the scripture is talking about here in Colossians chapter two. These people will come up with all kinds of things that they can do to prove that they're somehow genuinely saved. It's all up here though. It's all in their mind. That's the point. It isn't that I mean, you have the one end of the spectrum where it's just all belief and there's no change and you can just go on out and you can wear, you know, Donald Trump sweatshirts and, and uh, you know, be a total idiot and, and things and uh, just believe, just intellectual belief. That's one aspect of it. But then you have and like the Michael Pearl thing and whatever else. You can be a, a raging sex pervert, right? You know, Christian sex manuals, which he has. And... Um, you know, it's just a it's, a, it's an intellectual belief. There's no change required. You can sin and do whatever you want and it's, you're just, you won't come into condemnation and whatever else. Um, there's that. But then you have the other end of the Gnostic will worship thing where these people will come up with all kinds of ordinances, all kinds of touch not, touch not taste not, handle not to prove that they're somehow saved. Um, there are certain things God doesn't care about. Okay, just be very frank with you. I remember hearing an old black preacher the one time, and he said, um, I've listened to some really great sermons from, from the black brethren out there. There's, they come up with some good stuff sometimes. And this one old black preacher, I was listening to him, and he said, he said, God doesn't care what you do. He only cares why you're doing it. Wow, <laughs> that's a good one. But uh, getting back to our... Scriptures here. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 8 next. And these people will derail you. Like we read in Colossians chapter 2 there. 
um, about them beguiling you. Oh, they'll come out with these presentations and they will lie right to your face. I've seen that with these anti-Christmas people. I've seen it with the people that they'll go after, you know, you can't have pork products or something because it's condemned in the Old Testament or whatever. Well, that was undone in the New Testament, you know. Every creature of God is good, nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving, for it's sanctified by the word of God in prayer, written to a Christian. <laughs> well, but, oh, no, but brother, you know, pork, oh, it's pork. <laughs> and they'll beguile you. And they'll start coming along and they'll start to say, well, um, actually, you know, at the time of the first century, they're, you know, they didn't have the J sound when you see a J, it would be a Y. So it should be, you know, and Jesus or Jesus or whatever, Zeus and see a Zeus. So, so it should be Yeshua. You should say the Hebrew word, not the Greek word, because the Greek word is based on the Greek god Zeus. And they come up with all this stuff and they mess up your head. And, you, and you know, a lot of gullible young Christians, they don't know how to answer them, so they say, Really? Well, I didn't know. I've been celebrating Christmas and enjoying it, and I like to get gifts for other people, and I, it's been a great time. Well, I didn't know it was a pagan satanic thing and that people are sacrificed every year at Christmas. And I don't, we never did, but I guess it's a, you know, I'm supposed to give it up and just go to the scriptures. If they can't provide you with a clear scripture saying this is the way it's supposed to be, uh, then they're deceiving you. And more than likely, you're dealing with a Gnostic will worshiper. They're trying to beguile you, get you messed up. Uh, again, you know, the, another one of the devil's tactics that I've seen over the years, um, somebody gets saved and they start that process of sanctification. The devil will send people after them to beguile them. I mean, literally, a lot of these channels, different people out there that stalk me and my channel, they will actually email people. You post a comment and say, Brother Brian just got saved. Praise the Lord for your ministry. I'm really learning a lot. They will email you and tell you lies about me to try to mess you up and beguile you and get you away. I've seen it. I've, I've had people write me and tell me, Hey, brother, did you know so-and-so they're saying this? And they sent me emails. And they're, Is this true? And whatever else. And they'll say, Oh, you know, don't email Brian because... He'll just lie to your face because he's a deceiver. He's after your money and whatever. Ah, <laughs> oh, these people. Hell's going to be full of them. I'll just tell you that much right now. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 through 3. Now as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Gnosis. Hmm. Knowledge puffeth up. Look at me. I have a PhD. UC Berkeley PBI. I have hundreds of thousands of subscribers because of my vast knowledge. I'm here for you people. You you know, you don't quite have my level of knowledge. Remember, I was in a Baptist church years ago, Liberty Baptist Church, and um, Pastor Bob Hamlin, <laughs> uh, arrogant jerk, that the guy was total arrogant jerk. Bob Hamlin, if you could, if somebody could show this to Bob Hamlin, Bob Hamlin, you're an arrogant jerk. Uh, you're going to pay for that. But um, this jerk, arrogant jerk is standing up there and he literally said from the pulpit, he said, we're not all on the same intellectual level. I remember I just sat there and I thought, excuse me? And he said, he said, uh, I've, you know, received numerous degrees and, and some earned, but a lot of them uh, honorary. And um, we're definitely not all on the same intellectual level. Knowledge puffeth up slightly. Knew a brother down in Lancaster County, a saved man, an older guy, and, and he said he was out uh, doing some landscaping around the one church building he was going to, and Bob Howland literally came up and starts witnessing to him, and he said, oh, you know, I'm saved, brother. And he said, oh, you really need to know for sure. And he said, I'm saved. <laughs> you know, He said, back off, man. Arrogant jerk. <laughs> Knowledge puffeth up. I'm the I'm the Reverend Doctor. You know, hello, I'm the senior pastor. You know, First Baptist Church. Let me shake your hand. <laughs> Knowledge puffeth up. Verse two. And if any man think he that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. Hmm. That's another good one. Does God know you? 
I know God. I believe in God. I understand all the mysteries. I've read all of Ruckman's commentaries start to finish. I've read, you can't see them, but they're, I've all of uh, the pulpit commentary. I had a brother send them to me. Um, what's that? John MacArthur's commentaries all through the New Testament. Uh, theological Dictionary of the New Testament. I've I've got a lot of books and things. I've read them all, and I'm I'm so intelligent. You think that you know everything? You know nothing, as you ought to know. Um, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. We'll be talking about that in the next study. Um, you better humble yourself. You better get down on a low degree and and just say, Lord, could you please show me this, Lord? Uh, Hey, before you show me the interpretation of Scripture, could you please show me if there's any sin in my life that's displeasing in, in your sight? And Lord, I, I'm thankful that you forgave me. I'm thankful that you saved me, but I'm just still vexed by what I did in my past. And Lord, I, you know, forgetting those things which are behind, yeah, I know. But it just, Lord, I owe you so much for saving me and Lord, just tell me what to do and help me to have the courage to witness to people. Help me to have the courage to stand up at work and tell people the truth and, and to stand against my family. And Oh, Lord, please. That's the life of a Christian. Self-sacrifice. Presenting your body a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto the Lord, which is your reasonable service. It is reasonable for you to say, I need to pay you back, God, for what you did for me. Thank you, God, for saving me. Now I owe you big time. What should I do first? If any man love God, the same is known of him. Proverbs chapter 18. Going back there to the Old Testament. Proverbs chapter 18. Here's a really good description of these will worshippers, these Gnostics. Um... Yeah, and again, I've I've warned people about Robert Breaker and Gene Kim over the years and things. And I mean, all the old channels that were there on YouTube early on, where Breaker and Kim were nowhere around. Myself, uh, Edward PF one two three ex uh, ex Catholics for Christ. Uh, Greg Miller, I don't think he's even on YouTube anymore. But you know, all the the old ones, um, a couple thousand subscribers, you know, whatever. And all of a sudden, Robert Breaker and Gene Kim come along and it and it, you know, Robert Breaker admitted, somebody sent me, they forwarded the email to me, and Robert Breaker admitted that he's having his numbers purposefully inflated. He's, people are purchasing these artificial intelligence bots. Uh, one of the economist guys that I watch periodically, not every day, but I watch some of his videos when I have a chance just to see what's going on with the economy. And he said he's had numerous people contact him and say, you know, we can sell you these artificial intelligence bots to get your subscription number way up and he said why would I want to do that they're not real subscribers and I thought isn't it interesting that a lost man has more character than a bunch of professing preachers graduates of PBI hmm a bunch of Gnostics is what that they, what they are Proverbs chapter 18 verses 1 and 2 through desire a man having separated himself seeketh and intermendleth with all Wisdom, a fool hath no delight in, understa in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of these people out there that are Gnostic will worshippers, and uh, they come along to the Bible-believing world, and they they see benefits in it. Um, again, I've seen I've seen perverts use uh, Christianity; they'll make a profession of faith to get the people off their back or to go in and meet some you know good looking girls in church buildings I've seen that I've seen scam artists and they realize that they can scam people for a lot of money so they get all of a sudden called into the ministry I've seen I've seen all kinds of that stuff um, and again you know understand when I warn you about things I'm not just some guy that's been on YouTube and I've never been anywhere else and you know this people make fun of me and oh he's a hermit you know, I've been in church buildings <laughs> I was raised in church buildings. I heard the stories. I was there. I heard the gossiping and saw this person get kicked out because this thing happened. Been in churches all across the country, in other countries as well. I know what's going on. You say, well, you're not in one right now. Well, yeah, that's 
<laughs> because of the years of learning what those things really are about. There's no basis in Scripture for a church building. But again, what is our text saying there in Proverbs chapter 18? They have no delight in understanding, but that their heart may discover itself. And I've seen so many people, they come along to this ministry and they're adding to that knowledge base. They seek an inner middle with all wisdom. It's like the Bible warns about ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. That's what these people do. And they will study and study and study. Um, I know one of the weirdest things was years ago, somebody wrote me and they said, brother, they said, uh, a lot of the, the commenters that you're seeing, I think, are actually artificial intelligence. They're robots. And they're actually learning quite a bit from you. And they're making this part of their database and whatever. And I thought, that is so bizarre. So weird, you know, kind of a Gnostic robot thing or something. But there's a lot of people that do the same thing. A lot of these people, I I take them in. I try to be a friend of them and whatever else. And, and all of a sudden, after about a year or two, whatever, and, and they're gone. And it's, you know, then I hear the, oh, I was in the Denlinger cult. And then I came out and whatever else. Okay, fine. Are you going to continue with the Lord? Well, no, I went out and I got drunk afterwards, and now I'm back to my secular lost life. And then next thing you know, they're an atheist, and they're saying, you know, I'm just totally done with Christianity. I tried it for a while, and I was in a cult, and I think, what was it? Well, they, uh, through desire, a man having separated himself seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. They sought to be a Gnostic. And in their mind, they probably think, well, I, you know, still probably would get to heaven if, you know, if there is such a God or, you know, whatever else. It's all up here. Uh, the way that you can spot these people is that they will talk completely about it's your belief. Um, you don't have to ask God to save you. There doesn't have to be a change in your life. Um, just belief. That's all it is. And they'll go through the scriptures and they'll find as many verses as they can. They will study. They will seek and intermeddle with all wisdom. You see, they'll study it and they'll look for every verse that they can where it just says belief. And they will ignore other places where they, you know, there's repentance and things about sin and that the Lord changes your life and everything. Um, another one of their favorite little ones, and I've made videos exposing this thing for years. They'll say that uh, the word repent does not, in the peer, does not appear in the book of John. Okay, neither does faith. You know, uh, these guys are ridiculous, but see, they'll try to beguile you. Um, the gospel of Jesus Christ is a very simple thing. You are a sinner. All of sin and come short of the glory of God, so don't try to duck it. Well, I'm not. You're a sinner. That sin is negative. All sin is negative. God never says something is sin if it's good for you. You go to pick up some nice spring water and you go to drink and, and God says, you wicked sinner. You. Of course not. Of course not. God is never going to do anything negative to you when you truly are seeking him. All right? He tempteth no man. The Bible talks about that. You're a sinner. All sin is negative. There are some sins that you can clean up, some things that you can get, you know, secular means and whatever else. Go to Alcoholics Anonymous to get away from drinking alcohol and then you become a positive, you know, everything becomes all about positivity and everything else. Um, you can get rid of some things, but you'll just go into other sins. Uh, the only way that you can truly get help with all of your sins is to get saved. And that's the purpose of salvation, okay? Uh, to live for Jesus Christ and to have Him tell you how to get rid of those sins in your life. So you can be a holy vessel for the Lord to walk around and get things done. I mean, what kind of an idiot God would it be if, if he said, okay, I'm going, to, I'm going to save you and I'm just going to let you continue smoking your cigarettes, getting emphysema and lung, lung cancer and whatever else and drinking that alcohol so you can get cirrhosis of the liver and I'm going to keep you on the drugs so that you'll burn out up here in your, in your brain and, and you'll just be walking like a vegetable. Can I preach the gospel to you? You know, Really? How about a Christian that comes along and says, what a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my life. And since Jesus came into my heart, like the old hymn says, look what all the Lord's done for me. Oh, you look like such a clean little goody two-shoes right now. You want to see some pictures from my lost life? 
You want to know what I was back then? And how much I've changed? That's what it's about. Unless you're a Gnostic will worshiper. Unless you can come along and you can say either, uh, I, I believe in Jesus. Yeah, of course I'm a Christian. You know, of course I'm a Christian. You know, drinking your alcohol, doing a bunch of worldly, wicked things. Well, of course I'm a Christian. Oh, you know, I'm saved. That's one. The other one is that you say, I have all these things in my mind and I'm going to give up all these certain things in my flesh. I'm just going to serve the Lord and I'm going to suffer for Jesus and I'm going to merit my salvation and oh, look at me, I'm so holy and everything else. Well, um, touch not, taste not, handle not. Uh, these things that you're telling me that I'm supposed to be doing. Um, where's this at in Scripture? Where does it say that I have to say Yeshua instead of Jesus? Where does it say that I have to dress a certain way? Or live without electricity? Or drive around an Amish buggy? Or, or I can't celebrate holidays? Uh, I have to eat only certain meats and stay away from pork? Where does it say this? Because I can show you scriptures that contradict what you're trying to tell me. You're dealing with a will, will worshiper, a Gnostic, that's trying to get you off target. And these people, you know, it's so funny because so many of them, they'll eventually get to a point where they just say, you know what, I'm sick and tired of pretending this stuff. You know, forget it. It's not worth it. I want to just get away from this whole Christianity thing. So, I mean, no man can live a lie, you know, for his whole life. You know, so eventually you just get sick of it and say, oh, whatever. Um, so, that is going to be it for this study. I'm going to be getting into a lot more scriptures in the next study about humbling yourself when you are wrong. So we will talk more about some other scriptures, which these two studies kind of tie into each other. But I didn't want to do just one big study. I wanted to stay on the task here of this thing of the will worshipers. Um, be very careful about that. Uh, I have, Again, I've dealt with this stuff for years. And, uh, you know, learn from the experience of an older man. All right. Um, what more can I say? So we will see you in the next study.